Welcome to General Biology. Today's video is going to be about cancer. So cancer happens when we lose control of our cell division process. And the first stage of losing control of the cell division process is we usually have a mutation in one of the what are called proto-oncogenes. These are genes that are normally involved in the normal signaling of mitosis. So normally we get a growth factor that binds to a receptor and it starts a cascade that signals to the cell that it's time to divide. Once in a while, one of these cascade cells in the signal cascade will get mutated into a permanently on stage. When that happens, now this signal to the nucleus is always in the on let's divide now mode. So it's got a continuous divide, divide, divide signal even in cells that maybe normally wouldn't be dividing all the time. Another thing that happens with all tumors is we have certain genes that are involved in uh, making sure mitosis happens properly. There's a G1 checkpoint where all of the DNA gets checked before we replicate the DNA. There's a DNA or a checkpoint two where we make sure the replication process happened properly. And there's an M checkpoint. All of these checkpoints are involved in making sure mitosis happens properly. If you get a mutation in one of these, then perhaps we could replicate bad DNA or we could not check to make sure replication happened properly. And if that's the case, what happens is we end up with a lot of mutations um, being pushed forward into a particular cell line. In order for cancer, for a tumor to really develop to a serious state, it needs multiple mutations to happen. The first mutation usually is what we talked about, uh, permanent growth, and then the next mutation usually is ignoring the checkpoints, and also that allows the cell to escape apoptosis, so it doesn't ever kill itself if things are bad. And then eventually you have some other mutations that will happen that will immortalize the cell and allow the cell to increase blood vessel growth, so you, the tumor gets fed more oxygen. Uh, and sugar. And then at the very end of cancer, that's when uh, the cancer has developed the ability to break free and go start new tumors in other parts of the body. We call that metastasis. So here's an example of the kind of development of a tumor inside the colon. So you would get a mutation that would cause it to start to grow and more mutations that would suppress uh, new mutations from happening. And then eventually you'd get to what we call a malignant tumor. And all of this accumulation of these mutations, you reach a point where the um, cells can break free of the uh, encapsulation and spread either into the lymph system or into the blood vessels to be spread to other parts of the body. What's going to cause these hits? Well, we know of a lot of things that can cause cancer. UV radiation can cause skin cancer. Exposure to chemicals and radiation and pollution. We know cigarette smoking is a direct cause of cancer. Um, age, just because uh, as you get older, the chances of bad luck happening to you go up. Uh, genetics, some people are predisposed with uh, bad tumor suppressor genes or bad proto-oncogenes so that they only need to have one mutation instead of two mutations to uh, cause failure of those particular genes. And then, like I said before, bad luck. Sometimes mutations just happen. It's a random process and they happen to happen in areas where they cause tumor suppressors to fail or proto-oncogenes to be turned on. 
uh, more often than not, it's just a coincidental thing that those mutations happen. That's why as you get older and older, the chance of cancer goes up and up because you have more opportunity for random mistakes to take place. So we have two different terms for cancers. Uh, usually early on we call them benign tumors where they're still encapsulated and they're in their original site. And they're not very serious at that point. They're small and if you can remove them at that point, that's super beneficial. They're often hard to find because they're not really causing any symptoms at that point. And then later stage cancers, when they get into stage four and five, those are malignant. Okay, those are much more harmful because at that point they can spread to other parts of the body and start uh, new tumors in other parts of the body that are much more difficult to treat. Traditional treatments for cancer have included radiation and chemotherapy, and both of those are improving all the time. But in addition to that, we're developing some new um, therapeutics that are, we call them miracle drugs, but they're really specific for cancer. So in the past, our general chemotherapy would always just attack any fast dividing cells. Well, that would include your skin, and your digestive tract, and your hair, and your fingernails, and your blood cells. So people who were doing chemo often became anemic and lost their hair, and their skin got real thin, and they'd have uh, issues with their digestive tract, being feeling nausea a lot. Some of these new drugs are really focused on attacking just the cancer cells. And so um, we have lots of new drugs that are out there. And probably the biggest treatment uh, change we're going to see in the next five to 10 years is that they are going to use blood tests to test for different types of cancer. And they will be able to identify uh, cancer at an earlier state. And hopefully we will be able to treat people at the stage one and stage two of cancer. And so that will result in cancer basically becoming uh, not really a cause of death, more of just a treatable um, problem that people will run into. Uh, but we'll be able to find it early and treat it early and get people back to stage zero on a regular basis.